what we'll take a look at over here is another protocol that we discussed is another protocol for VPNs, a layer 3 VPN, which is GRE. GRE is again an encapsulation protocol, just like IPsec had the outer header and inner header. GRE does the same thing. The difference between IPsec, the one that we did, land, land to land, versus uh, what do you call it, uh, IPsec, uh, uh, between IPsec land to land and GRE, is GRE actually creates a logical interface. This interface connects two sites virtually as if they're directly connected, allowing you the ability to run a routing protocol over it. Remember I gave the classification earlier on based on a policy-based VPN versus a routing-based VPN? If you looked at the two labs that we did earlier on, both the labs, I specified what traffic goes into the tunnel by using a policy and ACL. Here, I'm not going to use an ACL. Routing will dictate that I have learned this route through this logical interface tunnel, so I need to send it over it. So because GRE has you create a logical interface, I can actually run routing on it, which I could not do in a land-to-land -land tunnel that you guys saw. All right? So the way it works, is you have router one connected to the internet, router three connected to the internet, both get their public addresses assigned to them by their ISP. They have a default gateway pointing towards the ISP. What you do over here is you create a logical interface, which is called a tunnel interface, which connects R1 and R2 as if they're directly connected. The way they accomplish that, they say this tunnel interface, any traffic that leaves this tunnel interface, will start from, and you specify your public source, 192.1.12.1, and it ends on 23.3. So any packet leaving this interface will have an outer header for source of 12.1 destination of 23.3. When they do that, when you do that, you basically have connected R1 and R2. R1 and R3 as if they're directly connected. Forget about this, the green tunnel is as if R1 and R3 are directly connected to each other. In your routing table, you'll see a new directly connected interface. Actually, you assign this network, this interface an IP address, let's say 192.168.1.0. So you'll have an IP address assigned to this tunnel and you specify the source and destination, start point and end point. When you do that, you'll actually have a new network in your routing table via the tunnel. And you give the tunnel a number, X, whatever the tunnel number is. Can be anything to like two billion something. By doing that, you've connected R1 and R3 as a direct. Now you can run any routing protocol as if it's a point-to-point -point circuit. This type of tunnel is a GRE tunnel. The outer header, the header looks like this. Any packet that goes through it will have a GRE header. Source, 192.1.12.1. Destination, 192.1.23.3. And then will come your ICMP packet, or your telnet packet, or your web packet, whatever packet you want to send. So let's say ICMP, which will, let's say, be from 10.1 to 10.3. Although it's encapsulated, it's not encrypted. GRE allows you the ability to set up a tunnel, but it does not give you the ability to encrypt traffic. All right? Does that make sense? You guys are okay with that? Clear? So that's what we're going to set up. Easiest type of tunnel to set up. But once you do that, once you set this topology up, then any type of network that you have, you just enable it to your routing protocol. You don't need to create an ACL or a policy for that. Especially useful if you have a bunch of different networks. In my previous example, I had A going to B, one to one, 10, one to 10, three, or 10, three to 10, one. What if I had five networks over here and five networks over here? Can you imagine the ACL? One to five, two to five, three to five, four to five, so it would be a big, huge ACL. Rather than doing that, it's a better way to do based on routing. This is a routing-based VPN because I'm not going to specify anything in terms of policies in this VPN. 
What protocol am I using? I'm using GRE as a protocol. Let's take a look. So the first thing that I'll do is I will set this up based on this topology. All right? in config t interface s0 slash 0 ip address 192.1.12.1 interface let's say i'll create a couple of loopbacks over here 10.1.1.1 and a default gateway Twelve dot two. Good. This is going to be on R one. Similarly, I'll do R three, which will be twenty three dot three. Let's put this as ten three, and the default gate will be twenty three dot two. Copy it. Go to R3. And the last router, the one in the middle. If I go to router 1, I should be able to ping on the public side 23.3. Let it come up. Good. 1 can go to 3. Now what I want to do is I want to connect R1 to R3 as if they're directly connected. I'll go ahead and create my tunnel. Any number, locally significant, up to 2 billion three parameters, the IP address, the common address of this link between R1 and R3. So if I'm on 192.168.1, he also, when he sets a tunnel IP address, will be on 192.168.1. Tunnel source, you can either do it based on the interface, you can do that, it'll pick the IP address from the interface, or you can specify the tunnel destination, you need to specify. Good. It actually creates an interface in your routing table, directly connected via tunnel one. You can check the tunnel interface, it'll show you the tunnel parameters, tunnel source, tunnel destination. Any packet leaving this interface will have this as the outer header, it'll encapsulate it. What protocol am I using? And I'll do the same thing on R3. Tunnel number doesn't matter. What matters is this. Has to be on the 192.168.3 network. Well, uh, one network, sorry. Dot three has a different address on that network. Tunnel source, 23.3. Tunnel destination, 12.1. At this point, if I want to, I should be able to ping 1.1. 192.168.1.1 through the router. Router 2 has no idea about it, but it's getting encapsulated. Now because of that, I have this type of setup, R1 to R3, as if I have direct connect over there. Using what network? 192.168.1.0. Now I can run my normal routing. Let's run EIGRP as my protocol, no auto, network 192.168.1.0, and network 10. I'll do the same thing on R1. As soon as I do that, it's going to send an EIGRP update over the tunnel interface, set up a neighbor relationship with R3. R1 and R3 are now directly connected. They are exchanging routes. 10.3 now is visible via 192.168.13 through the tunnel. So when I ping 10.3.1.1, source, let's say 10.1.1.1, it's 
says 10-3, it checks the routing table. 10-3 is reachable via tunnel 1. So it means it has to exit tunnel 1. As soon as it exits tunnel 1, what does it put? The outer header. The outer header will contain what? 192.168.12.1, So if you take a look at, let me do a... Sniff over here. All right. Right now, sending the HRP packet. Take a look at it. Outer header 23 to 12.1. Then it goes to the GRE encapsulation header. It's encapsulating an IP packet. And then you can see an inside header, which is what? 192.168.1.3 sending an update to or a hello to 224.0.0.10. That's the HRP packet. So if I send a ping now, Where's the ping? The thing though is you can see the ping. This is the ping, 10.1 to 10.3. You can actually see the data, <laughs> the dumb data that it sends in the ping. This is your dumb data, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Make sense? What's that? Got it? So if you take a look at lab number one, creating a normal tunnel, we have done that. Lab three, actually. Any questions? What's the drawback? Clear text. I can see the text. I don't have encryption. But it's good because it's allowing me to run a routing protocol through what? Through my tunnel because I actually create a interface with IPsec there was no interface created it's just a policy it's a tunnel less tunnel actually <laughs> all right so let me save this